it's okay. It was cool while they were here, or they're being very modest, right? We also have some special guest stars all the way from Cal, California. I'm trying to make good out of that state. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> and Texas, woo! Right. Yeah, we got a house full of modest Christians. You're just trying to hide or something. I don't know. But anyway, so uh, other announcements that we have today, of course, Tyndale Theological Seminary just started the next semester. If you're interested in doing that, you can do homeschool all the way from kindergarten all the way to doctoral level. You don't need to go to the sewer pipe. Uh, contact John Hood, chairman of our deacons, jdhsunrise at gmail.com if you're interested in popping in the next semester. Also, Holy Trinity Medical Practice is up and running the mobile unit next door to us, that trailer, as we work out on the more permanent solution next door at their expansion facility. Uh, but if you're interested in some faithful medicine that's actually here to help you, not hurt you, uh, Dr. Mick and Nurse Heather are here to help you. And we are now open for the whole state of Nevada. If you can't make it here locally, the whole state of Nevada, we are now open for telehealth options. So for our online viewing audience, 702-849-9092 to call if you would like to uh, do that. We're working on other states as we speak to begin to expand that telehealth option as people are looking for somebody that's there to help them. And again, unfortunately, in our days, not hurt them. And so again, cards are out there at the Connection Center for you to take uh, to remind you who to call, not Ghostbusters. Call 702-849-9092. Uh, and, and or takes extra seriously to give to other people to let them know that there is an alternative, truly so healthy alternative out there. Healthy alternative also means you get to, uh, if you're interested in getting some food that actually is not trying to kill you or genetically modify you, uh, that's why we started Clean Meat Co-op. And the cool thing about the new website for Clean Meat Co-op is it's cleanmeatcoop.com. You know why? Because we've tried to make it simple for you to remember Clean Meat Co-op with cleanmeatcoop.com. Does that make sense? Okay, so where do you go? Cleanmeatcoop.com. Or there's information out there if you want to get in the next round of meat that is not injected with the mRNA unfortunate technology. Also, hey, Lord willing, for still alive and still here, European Prophecy Conference. If you're interested in attending that with myself and the other speakers there, uh, Ireland, Scotland, and Italy, Lord willing, this fall, go to the teaching website, getalifemedia.com, and uh, look for that banner. Click on it, and that'll give you all the information uh, that you need to know for that as well. So, but hey, we are excited that you're here, and partly the reason why is because it's really, really weird and awkward to try to preach a sermon and nobody's here. I'm just being <laughs> transparent with you today. But anyway, no, we're glad that you're here. But if you could do something and help us out, somewhere near you should be this thing's called a connect card. And so if you could fill that out uh, for us, we could connect with you. And you got two options. You could one, put it in one of the two offering boxes as we exit uh, the sanctuary there at the back of the sanctuary. Or I highly recommend, once again, give it to one of the ladies at the Connection Center and you will get mugged in Christian love. Uh, as well, so we can connect with you. But we are glad that you're here today, but we're also going to say a big old howdy-ho to some of our online family from around the world. We have the privilege to share God's truth in these last days, and today is no different. We're going to where? Lee in Peru, who, I don't want to read too much into this, but it looks like he's happy to get off of that exciting boat. I think they painted over the words there in the white. I think it said SS Minnow or something. I don't know. But anyway, no, he's, he's there in Peru, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, and he's tuned into our studies. And you're going like, well, where is that? Well, thanks for asking. For those of you hooked on geography, once again, we're the motivated cow walking around in Vegas. That's us, right? And he's over here in South America on the west side there in Peru. So in your best Peruvanese, you know what to do. That's right. Just make it up. I don't even know how it goes either. Right. And, but anyway, that's right. On the count three, give a big old howdy ho to one of our online listeners, Lee in Peru. One, two, three. Howdy ho, Lee in Peru. I? 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 Maybe that is a Peruvian word. I don't know. We'll just run with it. Uh, but speaking of which, one last announcement. We also have, have you guys seen signs around? If you guys have actually eyeballs at work, signs around. You're going to see posters that says, what's this? Family Sunday, August 27th. That's right. The last Sunday of this month, if we're still alive and still here and something else hasn't happened, uh, then we are going to gather as a family, church family, for a fun time. We're going to have one service, the 1045 service, this service, one service. So we're going to be extra packed. It's okay. We're going to turn down that air conditioner. And then we're going to practice being Christians. And I'll just warn you, there's a good possibility that somebody might be sitting in your chair. So what? We're a family. Deal with it. Chalk it up. We're going to have a great time. Now, Family Sunday, uh, we're also going to be doing a communion as a family. We're going to have baby dedications. Uh, there must be something in the water. They just keep popping out. And then also uh, baptisms as well. 
and then I'll give a, a message on uh, family-related issues as well. So it's a special time, family. But again, just a reminder, if you show up at 9, more power to you. Have some coffee. Wait a little while. The doors will be open. Uh, but we'll be able to uh, take care of that situation uh, as well. So just that as a reminder. So also just want to remind you for our online audience and those, if you guys would like to uh, tune in and uh, stay with us and get connected, you can do that a couple different ways. Our live broadcasts are on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, but we get banned all the time with those things. Uh, so there's other ways that you can stay connected with us. Certainly the teaching website, getalifemedia.com. That's got everything there. Uh, some of the other alternatives would include GetLifeMedia.com and, oh, hey, look, a Telegram. Well, that's a nifty reminder over there. Telegram uh, as well if you guys want to tune in Telegram. We also have a Rumble account and things of that nature. So just different ways that we can get you to uh, uh, get plugged in. And, uh, again, if you get any of the DVDs or things that we have on the teaching website, we don't copyright our material. Please make a billion copies. We don't care. We're just trying to get God's truth out as fast as we can. Amen? That's almost like something Christians should do. It is. Thank you, brother. What do you mean? That's right. So, hey, we're going to have an offering this morning. If you'd like to partake in that, you are more than welcome to do so. Uh, you could just put it in one of the two offering boxes as we exit. Uh, if you're part of our online family, if you'd like to give as well, that's greatly appreciated as we share God's truth here in Vegas and around the world. Uh, you can do that three different ways. Go to the appropriate website. Look for the mailing address. You can mail it in, I guess. Uh, or there on the website, you should see donate or give. Uh, you can just click on that. Or even now, there should be a number appearing on your screen. That's your texting option if you'd like to text give. So let's pray for that. And we'll pray for our study that is out of this world. Okay. I thought it was funny. Let's just pray. <laughs> Father, we love you. And thank you so much, God, for, again, hopefully this is something that never gets old for us. I just think of the Apostle John when he says, and it's almost like he's blown away in the text. And he says, and that is what we are, the children of God. We who used to be enemies... Sinners, ungodly, Romans chapter 5. Now we're not just your children. You actually say we are your beloved. We just sung that. May that never, ever get old. May we always appreciate what you've done for us. And God, thank you, speaking of appreciation, for the ability to come here today. With relative ease, many of our brothers and sisters around the world do not have this, but you've given it to us for this season. We thank you for that. And it's here not just for our comfort. It's here for us to become hopefully and prayerfully better, stronger disciples for you. May that be our heart cry and mindset today, that we have come ready to grow, ready to learn, ready to be changed for the better. Thank you for the privilege to give of our time, our tongues, our talents, or even our treasure. And so if we give today, may it be biblical. You tell us don't give under compulsion, which means you feel like you have to, or you feel guilty about it, or it's just some legalistic, heartless thing. No. It's hopefully like with everything we do for you, Jesus, we're a cheerful giver. It's because we want to. It's because we love you. We're so thankful for what you've done. So if we give today, may it be a biblical, and we certainly ask for your blessings upon it, God, that you be glorified in it, that we, your church here at Sunrise, would have whatever practical resources we need to keep moving forward for you, and that lost souls would be one for you, whether it be here in Las Vegas, the Henderson area, whether it be uh, California, whether it be Texas, whether it be in Peru, where Lee's at. We just pray that, God, you'd bless this offering, that lost souls be one for you. And now, God, as we take a look at your word, and we take a look at what you told us was going to be characteristics of the seven-year tribulation. It's going to be a time of deceit like this planet has never seen before. Which, on the one hand, shouldn't surprise us because the Antichrist, Satan's man, and Satan's false prophet, the religious man, is going to be on the planet. And so they're going to emulate Satan. They're going to be liars, and they're going to be murderers. So on the one hand, we shouldn't be shocked, but help us to realize... God, that we're getting close. We're getting close to our departure because the deceit is ramping up, including about aliens and UFOs. And it has everything to do with your word, I'm convinced. So help us to get equipped, God, today, and not only for our benefit, so that we could share with the people around us, including people who profess to even be Christians, who are falling for this last day's deception. Help us to reach out to even them, God, and get them back on track biblically with what's going on in the world. And as always, God, if there's anybody here today or online that's not truly saved, would you please save them? This is not a joke. This is not a game. What is coming to the planet will be spun as a great time of utopia, and you tell us it is the worst time in the history of mankind. They need to get saved today so they can avoid the whole thing before it's too late. 
But please bless our study even now. We ask all this in your wonderful name, in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. Hey, if you guys were uh, online recently, maybe even watching TV, you may have come across one of the interviews I did with One America News recently. Uh, and I, they asked me to do an interview on aliens and UFOs and all that stuff because of the hearings that was going on uh, in the government. And uh, if you didn't see that, in case you didn't, I made some pretty bold statements in that interview about the identity of UFOs and aliens. So let's take a look at the very first part of that interview. Let's take a look. Welcome back to In Focus. It's the universal question that's vexed mankind since the dawn of time. Are we alone or is there life beyond our earthly bounds? The topic is front and center on Capitol Hill as lawmakers examine the possibilities of unidentified flying objects, better known as UFOs. A former intelligence officer was among the witnesses appearing Wednesday before the House National Security <coughs> Subcommittee, making some earth-shattering revelations. If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. And was this documentary evidence, this video, photos, eyewitness, like how would that be determined? The specific documentation I would have to talk to you and skip about. Joining me now with more, pastor of Sunrise Baptist Church in Las Vegas and founder of Get a Life Media Ministry, Pastor Billy Crone. Thanks so much for being back with us so soon. It's great to see you again. Yeah, you too, Allison. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> Absolutely. So what do you make of former U.S. intelligence official David Grusha's statement at the House hearing stating that we recovered non-human remains from an alien craft? Yeah, well, actually, uh, if you read the Bible, this shouldn't surprise you. Uh, because I think this is all part of a custom-tailored uh, last day's deception to explain away the very event that God says is next on his prophetic time calendar. And that event is called the rapture of the church. And that is when God evacuates all born-again Christians, takes him, them off the planet before the worst time in the history of mankind uh, is thrust upon the planet. The Bible calls that time the seven-year tribulation. So if, in fact, that event is going to happen and you're going to see millions of people disappear uh, and you're an enemy of God, then what would you be doing? You better be coming up with the best excuse you can think of to explain away why all of a sudden these people disappeared and specifically and only specifically Christians. Well, believe it or not, that's exactly what we have with the alien deception. Uh, they're called aliens. I agree with that guy. They're non-humans. Uh, but I don't agree with their assessment that there are a higher evolved race of beings uh, from the other side of the solar system or galaxy or whatever here to help us. It's a deception. They call them aliens. The Bible calls them demons. What? Wait a second. You got aliens. You got UFOs. And that's pretty bold to flat out and say this, this is demonic. And these things are demons in disguise. And they're really going to explain away this event called the rapture? Yes. And the reason why I wanted to uh, quickly, on the heels of that, uh, give a more deeper explanation is because when that came out, it was actually aired, believe it or not, it stirred up a lot of good questions. And so I want to answer some of those uh, today. So basically what we're going to take a look at is, that's right, aliens, UFOs, and the rapture of the church. Woo! I shouldn't have to say this. Now you understand the jacket. But see, I had to explain it. And you kind of ruined it, but I still love you guys. But anyway, that's right. Try to, you know, work with everything that I got. So anyway, but anyway. But you might think, Pastor Billy, come on, man. We just finished 15 weeks, man, on Klaus Schwab, the Great Reset, these global mega millennials trying to kill 90% of the population of the planet and all this stuff. And now here we are, UFOs and aliens. I'm a Christian. I don't need to know this stuff. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, big time. Two polls have come out that stated this is the United States of America. More people believe in aliens than in God. More people believe that aliens have visited planet Earth than that Jesus is the Son of God, which means, like it, lump it, leave it or not, folks, we got to deal with this as Christians. And there is an answer, it's, it's, but we need to do the biblical answer. We're truth tellers. We need to tell the truth. And the reason why is because, listen, it is becoming a replacement religion for Christianity. 
And I quote, UFOlogy has effectively become a new religion for the 21st century. Listen, where people now believe that aliens will save them, not God. So we need to deal with this. And so that's what we're going to do. And this is how serious it is. But I want to just tell you, uh, again, I, I make no bones about it, no apologies. I believe UFOs and aliens are a custom-tailored lie for these last days. It's a huge demonic deception. Now, as a caveat, before we get into the reasons why I believe that, I believe personally, and I'll put the number this high, about 95% of what people report as an alien, spacecraft, whatever, has nothing to do with that. I really believe that a lot of it uh, is government military aircraft from around the world that is so high tech. We're 30, 40, 50 years behind the technology, folks. Right? It's so high tech, we would literally freak out if we knew what the government's really had, including our own. And I get it, it's a national security issue. You're not going to go broadcast, you know, whatever. But, but once in a while, you could expect people to see these because you got to experiment with them. And then, oh, it's an alien UFO. So I think there's a high percentage, 95%, that that's all it is, folks. However, I do believe that there are some that are not military aircraft, the 5%. It's not a natural phenomenon, it's not a balloon, okay? that Biden lets go across the whole country. <laughs> it's not swamp gas. It's that smaller percentage that I believe we need to be prepared to give an answer for because it's part of a deception in the last days. But let's remind ourselves, where do deceptions come from? So we can begin that journey of how do we know this really is a demonic attack, a demonic deception in the last days? Well, open your Bibles to John chapter 8. John chapter 8, we're going to read verses 42 through 44. This is Jesus, of course, speaking, okay? And he's going to tell you when you know that somebody's father is not God, it's really the devil, that they're listening to the devil himself. How do you know? Where they're going to emulate two things. You know somebody, whether they deny it or not, whether they admit it or not, if they're really following a satanic agenda is when they're going to do these two things. This is straight from the mouth of Jesus, right? But let's stand as we read God's holy word. John, of course, was written by... You biblical scholars, don't you feel great? This is amazing, man. All right, let's, let's move in now with confidence. But here's what it says here, Jesus speaking. Jesus said, if God were your father, if, that's a condition, if God were your father, you would what? Love me. You'd love Jesus. Why? Because he says, I came from God and now am here. I've not come on my own, but he, the father, sent me. And in fact, why is my language not clear to you? Because listen, you are unable to hear what I say. Well, why won't they listen? Why can't they understand? Why? Because listen, God ain't your father. Here's the real father. You belong to your father, the who? The devil. the devil. This is Jesus speaking. And you want to carry out your father, the devil's desire. Well, what's that? Here it is. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. And when he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of what? Lies. All lies. So you may be seated if you can, but basically Jesus is saying, listen, Satan, he's not only a murderer. And he said, since the beginning, he's going back to the creation account. Satan didn't just lie to Adam and Eve to create the fall of mankind, but he knew that as soon as they gave into that lie, what would happen? They would die. They didn't die right away, but they would die. He's a murderer. And he's been one from the beginning. But he's also the one that started the first lie. Okay. And then therefore, the Bible is very clear, Jesus speaking, any lie, whether you and I saw it or not, or were there or not, even if it's a lie that started 200 years ago, ultimately started from who? From Satan, some sort of demonic thing. Whispering to somebody, that's where the lies come from. He's the father of all lies. And I'm telling you, it's the same thing when it comes to UFOs and aliens. It is a lie straight from Satan, purely custom tailored in these last days. And I believe it's for twofold. Number one, it's gonna be used to explain away the rapture of the church. I'll show you that in a little bit. Number two, for those who are left behind who did not get saved today, they're gonna to lie to you and say, this is great. No, it's not. It's the worst time in the history of mankind called the seven-year tribulation. But let me demonstrate that for you today. The first way we know that UFOs and aliens are alive is because they lie like demons. All right? That's how we know. They lie. What do we just read? Where do lies come from? Satan, right? So that's what demons do who follow Satan, the one-third angels who went with him. They do the same thing, right? They lie. They can't help but lie. That's their character because that's Satan's character. The father of all lies. And, and the reason why I know then, therefore, that UFOs and aliens, the whole thing, uh, is a demonic deception is because their very premise is built on a lie called evolution, right? 
What's the whole premise? What do they say? Supposedly, the whole identity, the whole thing, UFOs and aliens, what are they? Well, everybody knows they're a higher evolved race of beings from the other part of the galaxy, whatever, and things that... Whoa, wait a second. If evolution's not true, and it's not, then you just lied to me, right? If evolution can't take place on this planet, and it can't, and we got the best conditions in the universe, it ain't going to happen anywhere. It's a lie. So before you even open your so-called alien mouth, your whole identity is based on a lie. Where do lies come from? Satan. Satan. Not only that, if evolution were true, then you would expect when these critters show up that it would be consistent with evolution, meaning you should see a giant blob, some random shape of an alien appear because evolution is just all random and chaotic. That's not what they find. For some reason, they're all the same characteristics. Watch this. When I got out in 1989, we had cataloged 57 different species. Uh, you have individuals that look very much like you and myself that could walk among, among us and you wouldn't even notice the difference, except for some of the things that uh, they might be able to go ahead even in a dark room and touch an object and go, go ahead and identify what color that object might be. They would have a heightened sense of smell, sight, uh, hearing. Uh, the uh, situation is that you have various types of what we normally call grays. We didn't call them grays in the military, but you had at least three types of the grays. You had some that were much taller than we were, uh, the unique thing I th uh, that I'd like to point out for the most part is that the entities that we did catalog were in fact humanoid. Now this created a situation where the scientific community was trying to figure out why that would be the case. Because you would expect that if life evolved on other planets that they would take on some type of other uh, being, so to speak. Not necessarily look humanoid or be bi bipedal such as we are. But apparently, we've got quite a few of the species out there that are humanoid in appearance. And that creates a question that yet has to be answered by science. In other words, it doesn't line up with the live evolution. If evolution were true and these guys are a higher evolved race from somewhere, then at some point you would think they would show up as a random blob or a random shape or some random thing. But they're all humanoid just like us. As he admits, that's not consistent. Well, it's called a lie. So that's another evidence. Your identity is a lie. How you show up is a lie. Oh, by the way, how you show up with your technology is a lie. Because they keep changing it. Depending on the generation and whatever flying technology they had then, then that's how they show up. It's all a lie. Let me give you a quick example of that one. Most people today envision UFOs to be exactly as they are portrayed in most science fiction films and books. This is, of course, a relatively recent conception. It has been stimulated, perhaps, by our expanding knowledge of outer space. But strange sights appeared in the skies long before space flight or manned flight of any kind was possible. And in each century, these visions took on identities that tell much about the world view of those who saw them. And as you saw, some of the pictures, because this is still actually in print in some newspapers in the 1800s, they showed up as a blimp. A blimp. And these people in the portholes of the blimp, as the accounts go in the press back then, they told them that they have come from Mars. Really? You came all the way from Mars on a blimp. That's what they said. Why? Because that's all the flying technology that was available in the 1800s. But now all of a sudden, in a very short amount of time, you appear as a metallic spaceship or things that nature when our flying technology has gone from the blimp to where it is today. So wait a second. So number one, did you really fly from Mars on a blimp? Like, like you said, you liar. Or, or did you just have this, apparently some guy was born on alien Mars and he got really smart. And he says, hey, we could do better than a blimp. And in a very short amount of time, you, you, you beefed up your technology to where you now appear. To no, it's all a lie. You lie about your identity because there is no such thing as evolution. That's a lie. 
You lie about when you show up. You're, you're not even agrees with the lie of evolution. It's not some random blob or shape. It's all humanoid, just like us. And then you lie with each succeeding generation about your technology to dupe that generation. It's a lie. Where do lies come from? Satan. Satan. It's a demonic deception. Okay. Now, the second reason why I believe that UFOs and aliens are demonic deceptions is because they teach like demons. And what they teach is nothing but lies. They can't help but lie. But I'm not joking. These are actual messages from supposed UFOs and space brothers. It's demons. But this is what has been recorded, kind of a synopsis, of the messages they flew all the way here. They took of their time. Millions and billions of light years. To come and tell us this information I'm about to share with you that we desperately need to know. Right? And here it is. And I'm not making up any one of these. Right? Here it is. Number one, that all of us are little gods. Really? You come all the way across the universe to tell us that we're all little gods, which number one is not true. So it's a lie. Number two, uh, God by definition is the supreme. And if you had more than one God, then you're not supreme. So it's ridiculous, illogical, let alone unbiblical. And what was the lie that Satan told Adam and Eve that started the whole lying process and death and destruction and sin? You'll be like gods. Really? So now you agree with Satan. That's the first clue, but it gets worse as you go. All the way across the universe to tell us that the earth is a living entity and we need to worship her and change our ways or we will be destroyed. Really? Jesus, Muhammad, and Buddha all came from the ETs to assist mankind in our next step of evolution. That's a double lie. There's no such thing as sin and we don't need to be saved. What? Now you're picking specifically on Christianity. Why? I wonder why. Maybe because it's true. Right? They also say that you and I got it wrong. Jesus' real message was to teach that each one of us can become Christ's. What? They come all across the universe, supposedly, to say to aid in contacting them, you need to refrain from certain foods and practice meditation. I have to get in, into an altered state of consciousness in order to contact you? We'll get to that in a second. Uh, and then they say mankind needs to unite into a one world government and a one world religion or we will be destroyed. They even say we need to follow a one world leader. Really? The Bible calls that the Antichrist kingdom. You don't want to be a part of And not only that, they say, and I'm not joking, the devil or Lucifer is actually a good guy who's come to free us. I am not joking. Really? So let's put all this together. You came all the way across the galaxy, supposedly, right? Just to tell me that uh, we need to support the Antichrist kingdom. Jesus, God, and the Bible's all got it all wrong. You don't need to be saved. <laughs> oh, by the way, don't forget Satan's a good guy. Really? You would think you would give us something we could use. How about a cure? Come across all the way to the galaxy. Hey, we got to go help mankind. Hey, here's a cure for cancer. Hey, here's something that will fix the energy crisis. Here's what will bring Pete. No! You only slam specifically the biblical God, Jesus, and Christianity and promote the Antichrist kingdom and say Satan's a good guy? What do you think that is? It's a demon. In fact, other researchers admit it. Even Dr. Walter Martin, back in his day, he knew who these things were. He said the big problem is not what they are. It's who they are. And the key is their theology. In other words, what they teach. They're all saying the same thing. They're all bad-mouthing the Bible. In other words, it's a supernatural manifestation, which Christianity calls demonic. John Ankerberg, common sense question. He says, in light of the messages given by the UFO entities, how credible is it to think that literally thousands of so-called genuine ETs would fly millions and billions of light years just to teach New Age philosophy, <laughs> deny Christianity, and support the occult? Why would they do this when we already got this on the planet? That's nothing new. And why would they consistently lie about things which we know are true? And why would they purposely, what? Deceive their contacts. I'll tell you why. Because they're demons. And demons can't help but lie. They're lying. But that's not all. The third way that we know that UFOs and aliens are demonic deception is they travel like demons. Demons are fallen angels. Right? One third went with Satan, rebelled against God. Two thirds stayed with God, the holy angels. But the Bible tells us how angels, including fallen angels, travel. They travel from the spirit realm into our realm and back and forth. In fact, let me give you uh, one example of that in Scripture. 2 Kings 6 and 17 says this, And Elijah prayed, O Lord, open his eyes so he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. If you're familiar with that context there, basically, there was a physical army that came to get the prophet of God. He wasn't freaking out because he could see God's invisible army that was there the whole time, protecting him, the angels, okay? 
And, uh, but his, his servant didn't see it. He didn't, couldn't see spiritually what was really going on in the spirit realm. So he prayed God opened his eyes so he could see. So in other words, so you take a chill pill, we're going to be fine. That's one passage dealing with the reality of angels appearing and disappearing, which would include fallen angels, how they travel. Another one, just real quick, verbally, Abraham. Remember when the three people visited him? Abraham, the angels came, right? He was there and he hanging out with them, feeding whatever. And then next thing you know, he turns around and they're gone. And so the Bible talks about when you talk about angels, they travel from one realm to the next. We call it, the Bible calls it the spirit realm into our realm. And they, they, they listen, pop in, pop back out. They're there one minute, they're gone the next. To use a scientific term, they materialize and they dematerialize. Now, I said all that to get to this. Guess how it is, of not the 95%, which I believe are government aircraft, but these beings that travel, guess how they travel? Not so much physical in nature, but spiritual in nature. It's like they're popping in from one realm to the next. And this is what we see with the examples. We see on record, quote, we clocked them at speeds at 15,000 miles an hour, making a right turn, which would turn anything into road pizza that was physical. How'd you pull that off? And so they're like, well, this is more spiritual in nature than physical. They make no sonic boom like a normal physical object does. If it was physical, it would make a sonic boom, but they don't. More importantly, radar has never once ever recorded UFOs entering into our atmosphere. They just pop on the radar and they pop right off. You would think that if it's a real physical aircraft, that at some point we would get a report going, hey, Bob, here they come. Better get this to CNN and get them out there, right? Because we see them, uh, a whole fleet of them coming up around the backside of Jupiter. They're headed this way. According to our calculations, they're going to be here in three days, four hours and 18 minutes. We better start the countdown. Let people, hey, hey, they're coming up the dark side of the moon. We always wondered what was on the dark side. Here they come. We see them, alien fleet. They're going to be here in 14 hours and three. You never see that. But that's what you would expect. They just pop in. They pop out. Well, who does that? Angels, including fallen angels. That's how they travel. In fact, this is secular researchers. This is them saying this, not just me. There seems to be no evidence yet that any of these craft or beings originate from outer space. Quote, one theory that can no longer be taken very seriously is that UFOs are interstellar spaceships. In other words, secular researchers, these guys who study this for decades, say based on how they're traveling, they're not coming from outer space. They're coming from inner space. They're coming from another dimension. And the Bible says that's how angels travel, spirit realm dimension into our realm dimension, the physical realm. Quinky dink? I don't think so. You're dealing with the same thing. Now, let's get even more specific. The fourth reason why we know that UFOs and aliens are a demonic de deception is they communicate like demons. We just saw earlier the list of things that they supposedly came millions and millions of light years to tell us that we're all little gods. Satan's a great guy. Hey, build the Antichrist kingdom. Okay, but they don't tell you the news. They don't tell you, well, how do I get this information from these guys? I mean, remember, they're supposed to be a highly advanced technological race. I mean, surely they're going to send us an email. They're going to tap into our phone, send us an alien text or something, right? No. The only way you get this information from them is you have to get into an occult practice that God says invites demons. This is crazy, folks. It's like, how do you get around this one? Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12, God says this, Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire, who practices what? divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or cast spells, or who's what? A medium. What's a medium? That's when a spirit demon takes over your vocal cords and speaks through you. Or who consults the dead. Why? Because anyone, God says, who does these things is detestable to the Lord. Why? Because it's demonic practice. And God doesn't want us deceived. That's what you're going to get 100% of the time. When you get involved in occult practices. But here's my point. I'm not joking. Of all things, these guys show up. You're supposed to be highly advanced. The only way I can get this so-called new information that mankind desperately needs is I have to get into an altered state of consciousness. I have to follow an occult practice. And then I have to allow you to take over my vocal cords and speak through me. A walkie-talkie, maybe? Yeah. You know what? I'll even take a low. Just how about write me a note? Surely you got your, you got pencils on Mars? You got pencils? Can you? Are you serious? And folks, that's the truth. That's how you get this so-called information. You have to get into an altered state of consciousness and let them take over your vocal cords 
to become a disseminator of their truth so that the rest of us can get this message. It's nuts. Now, what's really nuts is the Bible says that's exactly what people would do in the last days. This is right here, 1 Timothy 4.1. The Spirit, God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, clearly says that in the latter times, the last days, some will not just abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits, but what? Things taught by demons. They're listening to this alien message. It's the new gospel. It's a false gospel, but it's a new gospel. It, the, the aliens are here to save us. They're, fall, they're listening. People who go to church services believe this. And God says, in the last days, that's what they're going to do. They're going to abandon the faith, and they're going to listen to things taught by demons. And part of the seduction is, oh, they're not demons. They're just aliens here to help us. Now, if you think that people aren't doing this, I, I could be here all day and give you examples. I came out of this new age, and this was big. In fact, you were primed to not only let these spirits, demons, speak through you, but you hoped that you would get a double added bonus that it was some of the space aliens orbiting the planet because they got all this great information. But I'm telling you, this really goes on. In fact, let me give you one quick example. This is the only way that we can get this information is get into an altered state of consciousness and they literally take over people's, it's full on possession. But here's one guy doing it. And watch what he says the aliens have told us that we need to know. Watch this. Hello. Hello. We are the IEL. We are the IEL. We are the IEL. And we are, would like to be of service to you today, if we can, in any form, in any way you wish. Hi, I'm Jonathan Martin. I'm an extraterrestrial channel. They're an extraterrestrial civilization from our future. They tunneled through to our timeline to reproduce with us. And they're actually extracting um, semen and eggs from male and females and mixing our genetic material with their genetic material to produce a hybrid race to help them to help prolong their civilization. Yes. Well, but from what they teach. We're going to be a seventh hybrid race, and we're all going to have interbred with all the hybrid civilizations and the extraterrestrials, and we're going to be a new species formed. So, yes, yeah, so presumably to achieve that, we're going to be having consensual sex with these extraterrestrials. Where do you even start with that one? As you just saw, what he, he meditated, got into an altered state of consciousness, and who came through? It was demons. But what they pose as? Aliens. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's really, what, you, gotta, you can't just say your name once? Did you what, whatever, but th this is real. This, so you, again, you can't tap into my phone. You can't send me a text, a walkie talkie. How about beam down one of those devices from start Kirk to enterprise, Kirk to enterprise. do something, but what you got to take over my vocal cords. But then what did he say? These aliens are saying on top of the other thing, you're a little God. You got to worship at the planet. Satan's a great guy and, and build the antichrist kingdom. He said, what they're here taking samples of human sperm and eggs and DNA and then we're going we're gonna to mingle with them? Folks, that's exactly what happened last time when God judged the planet in the days of Noah. Genesis 6, 4. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward. When what? The sons of God, fallen angels, went to the daughters of men and had children by them. They're preaching the same thing that God the judge the planet the first time. And that's why Jesus said this. How do you know it's getting close to his return? They're going to do it again, just like you saw in the video. Matthew 24, 37. As it was in the days of who? What? Noah. Noah. So it will be, not maybe not mine, at the coming of the Son of Man. Now, that's wild enough. And that's what Jesus said. It's getting close to his return. But and I'm, I'm, going to say, I'm not going to say, thus saith the Lord on this. But some of the footage out there you've seen, uh, one of the latest footage is uh, supposedly a interrogation of one of these alien greys that's been out there since the 90s. And they're starting to put that out there too. Number one, I don't trust anything of the footage uh, of these things. But what, let's just flirt with the idea that somehow, some way, this was part of their deception that they would even allow a, something that was tangible, physical to the touch that people go, well, how do you deny that? It's, it's right here before our very eyes. It's not Photoshop. It's not a hologram. It, it's, it's, it's a physical alien. Well, go back to what he said, that they're here what? They're taking sperm, DNA, eggs, experimenting with humans. So 
I'm not saying thus saith the Lord, but if that were to happen, if we were still here in their deception, then I would call that a demonic, and this is just something I made up, a demonic bio suit. That's why they're doing the experimentation on people, including reproductive capabilities to produce a biological suit. And you say, well, why would you say that? Because scripturally, we know these things are demons, but scripturally, the Bible also tells us that demons only inhabit living things. And there's only two options. They don't inhabit a chair, okay, or this jacket as cool as this is, but they inhabit what? People or animals. So demons, in order to walk around, they need something living tissue to walk around in. So could that be what they're doing? And could that even be part of the deception that they would even show up with that? But no, most people have no clue. And they well, I just saw it. I touched it with my own eyes and with my hands. It's, it's got to be real. No, it's not. Now, again, I'm not saying thus saith the Lord, but you look at what they're saying they're doing with people, it makes you wonder. But even bigger than that, the fifth reason why we know it's a demonic deception is because they possess like demons. You see, they don't just want to take over your vocal cords we just saw, which is clearly demonic. They literally say to these same people, okay, well, now that you've gotten used to that, how about we go to the next step? How about you just allow us to inhabit your whole body? And they have a term for that. I'm not joking. I remember back in my new age days, they don't call it, hey, how about uh, you allow us to possess you? That's too obvious. <laughs> the word they use is this. It's a walk in. Hmm? And then give us permission that we will walk into your body. And then we'll use your whole life. And you'll become, and this is their term, a star child. You'll be a disseminator of the light, of all this knowledge that mankind needs in this desperate hour. It's possession. That's all it is. They just repackage it. And if you don't believe me, that's what happens when people have an encounter with these critters. Let me give you just one example of what happens to people when something actually does show up. It doesn't go well. Let's take a look at that. On the evening of October 25th, 1973, a young Pennsylvania farmer, Stephen Pulaski, and at least 15 other witnesses saw a bright object hovering over a field near them. Stephen grabbed his rifle and went to investigate. It was then that he noticed something walking along by the fence. They were hairy and long-armed, with greenish-yellow eyes, and a smell like burning rubber was present. Stephen sensed that these creatures were not friendly and fired a tracer bullet over their heads. And when they kept on coming, he fired directly at one of them. The creatures then all disappeared into the woods, and the glowing object disappeared from the field instantaneously. UFO researchers, as well as a state trooper, were called in to investigate. When they arrived, the people there told them that Stephen had been growling like an animal and flailing his arms. His own dog ran toward him, and Stephen attacked the dog. Stephen then collapsed, and after a time, began to come to his senses. The entire group commented on the nauseating, sulfur-like odor that was present. Wait a second. Sulfur? Sulfur. Sulfur. Did you know that often when demons show up, <laughs> you know what they smell like? Sulfur. Let, let me give you a quick example. The Amityville Horror was based on a factual account of what happened to a family in Amityville, New York. An irritating and nauseating odor seemed to accompany the presence of the ghost or spirit entity that entered there from time to time. Whitley Strider wrote of his abduction experiences in his book, Communion. He said he could smell their presence and that it smelled like sulfur. There it is again, sulfur. Demons show up, they smell like sulfur. Aliens show up, they smell like sulfur. Not uh, stale milk. You know, a rotten cheeseburger. You know I'm going to say it. A bucket of chicken. <laughs> but of all things, demons and aliens, you stink like sulfur. Why? 
I don't know, maybe it goes something like this, Revelation 19, 20. But the beast, the Antichrist, was captured, and with him the false prophet, who had performed the miraculous signs on his behalf. And with these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worship of his image in the seven-year tribulation. And the two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Demons and aliens just happen to smell like the very stench of the lake of fire. Interesting. UFO researchers admit that, again, they possess people. They admit that people habitually do one of three things when they have an encounter. And I quote, number one, they go insane or act like they're and or possessed, like you saw that guy in the video. Number two, they go deeper into the occult after the experience and or new age, i.e. they're led astray from God. Number three, they kill themselves. Self-murder. Who's not only a liar, but a murderer from the beginning? Satan. And this is why people who are involved in the occult, wonder of wonder, in their black magic ceremonies, in their contacts with demons, you know who also, even in those involved in occult practices, who also happens to show up? <coughs> Aliens. This is another point that I made on the interview. Watch this. Uh, I don't know if your listeners are familiar with a gentleman. His name is Aleister Crowley. And secular researchers say that he was the most evilest man who ever lived. He was involved in serious black magic. He still to this day has had a huge influence on the music industry, Hollywood, etc. And But he was contacted by several beings that gave him all this occult knowledge. Okay, And one of them was called Lam, L-A-M. And he actually drew a picture of it. And this is what the picture is of Lam. What does that look like to you? Like That's an alien. alien. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's just one easy way to show. It's all the same thing. All they've done is repackage themselves. We live in a skeptical, anti-biblical society today. And of course, you start talking demons. People say, oh, you're a wacko, right? But then all you got to do is repackage them and say, oh, no, they're aliens from another dimension. They're here to help us. It's the same thing. And I'm not the only one coming to that conclusion. We are talking about UFOologists who've been studying this phenomena for 40 plus years. They're coming to the same conclusion based on how they act. And let me share that with you. Dr. Jacques Vallée, he was the guy that was in Steven Spielberg's, he was uh, portrayed as the scientist in Spielberg's uh, Close Encounters uh, movie. This is the guy. He's a real guy. He said, quote, we are dealing with a yet unrecognized level of consciousness independent of man, but closely linked to the earth. I do not believe anymore that UFOs are simply the spacecraft of some race of ET visitors. It's too, this notion is too simplistic to explain their appearance, their frequency of their manifestations recorded throughout history. Quote, an impressive, impressive parallel can be made between UFO occupants and the popular conception of what? Demons. Demons. Secular researchers are saying the same thing. And then he goes on. He says, the medical examination to which the abductees are often subjected, often sadistic manipulation, is, quote, reminiscent of the medieval tales of encounters with demons. The symbolic display seen by the abductees is identical to the type of initiation ritual or astral voyage that is embedded in the occult traditions of every culture. It's all come from the same source. Thus, the structure of abduction stories is identical to that of occult initiation rituals. That's what they're doing to people, right? Another one, Lynn Cato, he said this, a large part of the available UFO literature is closely linked with the mysticism, spiritual, and the metaphysical, it deals with subjects. When UFOs and things appear on the scene, this is what's coming with the package. Mental telepathy, automatic writing, invisible entities, phenomena like poltergeists, ghost manifestations, and what? Possession. Many of the UFO reports now being published in the press recount alleged incidents that are strikingly similar to what? Demonic possession and psychic phenomena. Maybe it's the same thing. It is. Uh, Dr. Pierre Guerin from France, he says this, UFO behavior is more akin to what? Magic i.e. the occult, than it is physics as we know it. The modern UFO knots and the demons of past days are probably what? Identical. Identical. They're coming to the same conclusion, folks. And John Keel, he's a big one. He says the manifestations and occurrences described in this imposing literature on demonology are similar, if not entirely identical to what? The UFO phenomenon. These guys aren't even Christians. The UFO manifestations seem to be, by and large, listen, merely minor variations of the age-old demonological phenomenon. In other words, in our skeptical, anti-biblical society today, just like I said on the interview, you start talking demons, you're a wacko. So all they did was change their terminology 
You know that demon were an alien. We're not coming from the spirit realm. We're coming from outer space. That's all he's done. Secular researchers admit that. But let me give you another one as if that wasn't enough proof. How do you get around this one is beyond me. These things are rebuked like demons. Rebuked like demons. Okay? How do you get around this? Let's take a look at one passage of somebody in the Bible that was demon-possessed and how in the world that demon got out of that person. Right? It rhymes with Jesus in case you're wondering. Because it was Jesus, in case you're wondering. Uh, Mark chapter 1 says this. Jesus went to the synagogue and began to teach. And just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by what? An evil spirit, a demon, cried out. What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Isn't it interesting that the demons know who Jesus is? But you got people behind pulpits today who don't. Who's controlling that church? Right? Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. And the evil spirit, the demon, shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were amazed at each other and said, what is this? A new teaching and with authority? He, Jesus, even gives orders to the evil spirits, the demons, and they what? They obey him. So if you want to get rid of a demon, what do you do? We know this as Christians. You command them in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ to flee, and they do every time. Why? Because they have to obey him because he is God. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And they have to obey him. Now, did you know there's actually one way on record to get rid of an alien when they appear on the scene? You know what it is? And this is secular researchers even admit this because it's a, quote, strange trend. You don't call out the name of Buddha. You don't call out Muhammad. You don't call out the confused one. I mean, Confucius. You call out the name of Jesus Christ and these things flee just like that. What do you think that is? Let me give you a couple of counters of that in action. This guy, Bill, he was in Florida. Uh, It was late at night. He saw some lights in his living room window. He thought it was the helicopters looking, you know, in Florida for the drug runners. Agitated his dogs for several hours. He couldn't go to sleep. All of a sudden, he's lying in bed. He's awake by the barking dogs. All of a sudden, bang! Sleep paralysis sets in. He can't move. He can't speak. He saw this whitish gray mist, this fog. He sensed that something was in his room. His wife did not waken during the whole time. The next thing he knew, he was being levitated above his bed. He was alive with terror. He couldn't scream. And this is what he said. He said, so helpless, I couldn't do anything. I said, Jesus, Jesus, help me. He says, and when I did, he said there was a feeling or a sound or something, either my words that I thought, the words that I tried to say, whatever, had hurt Whatever was holding me up, I fell, I hit the bed. It was like they threw me back on the bed. He says, but when I did, my wife woke up and asked why I was jumping on the bed. Yeah, now you wake up, right? (laughs) Right? Quote, this was the first time that experienced field investigators, non-Christians, had ever heard of an alien abduction ever being stopped. And he did it by speaking the name of Jesus Christ. What do you think that is? Another one, just a couple, they said, quote, my wife and I had a strange experience in the middle of the night. At that time, we knew nothing about UFO abductions or anything of that nature, but it fits the same category. But it says this. uh, They said, quote, the point is they stopped the entities, the whole experience with the name of Jesus. And I love this. Quote, it is vital to get this information out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it is. In fact, UFO researchers admit this is a strange trend. Why is it that these things can be always commanded to leave in the name of Jesus Christ? Watch this. My name is Joe Jordan, and I'm the state section director for the Mutual UFO Network for Bavard County, Florida. I'm also lead field investigator. When we get a call for an investigation, we take all the information we could over the phone, and then we send investigators out, sometimes myself, sometimes other investigators working with me, and we follow up to do an investigation report. To these people, they were sincere, they had sincere experiences, and they were looking, a lot of them looking for help, and they felt it being that we were involved as researchers, investigators, that we could be some help to them. My name is Joyce Ahrens. Um, I'm a floral designer. I was laying in the bed, my husband and I, and I was laying on my right side. And all I could see when I opened my eyes, all I could see was this red light above the window. And I could see my husband's shoulder, but I was like paralyzed. 
skin. He looked like elephant skin. And he had the big bulbous hair with the big red brown eyes. As an honest researcher, I realized that I couldn't just count these people out because there's the stuff that they had was so bizarre. Most of the researchers in the realm had said it wasn't possible to, to stop an experience. Knowing that, I called some of the leading researchers in the country. So I said, guys, I've got a very unusual case here. This man, we'll use the name Bill, and during his experience <gasps> in fear, he calls out, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, please help me. By calling out, he abruptly stops his abduction experience. These entities can be stopped in the name and authority of Jesus Christ. Once down in Coco, this was after I accepted Jesus Christ, they tried to come. And I kept saying, no, no, you're not doing this. And I took on the empowerment of Jesus Christ, and I stopped that. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. These are spiritual entities. Taking on the empowerment of Jesus Christ puts a stop to a lot of things. And he's helped me a great deal. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. One lady that I personally interviewed in Oregon, her name is Christine, I'll just say that. She shares that in their farm. They kind of lived out in the boonies in Oregon that uh, three of these critters showed up. Her and her twin sister uh, was there, and they tried to get away from them. They unfortunately went into a direction where they got cornered into the back of some bushes, and they couldn't go anywhere else. She says they got closer. She says all she could think about doing was just calling out the name of Jesus. She said, Jesus, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ, I, I command you to flee. She said they didn't just flee. They fled so fast. They were tripping over each other, high-tailing now. They're trying to get out as fast as they could at the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know. You guys got the John was written by John question. I think you can get this one, too. It's, it's like the old phrase. Uh, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, you know, that's just probably a, a duck. So if it walks like a demon and talks like a demon and travels like a demon, acts like a demon, lies like a demon, possesses like a demon, and is rebuked in the name of Jesus Christ like a demon, I can't think it's a demon. Anybody else? Maybe? Let me give you one more because it's headed somewhere. It's headed somewhere, and I'm telling you, they deceive like demons. And the big deceit that this is all corralling around, not just to lead people away from God, that's a given. Not to just discount Christianity, that's a given. But it is to explain away the rapture of the church. It wasn't God. It was the aliens that did that. That's what happened to those people. Let's take a look at that passage. One of them dealing with that event called the rapture of the church. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-17, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we, who are still alive and are left, will be caught up harpazo. It means a quick snatching or catching away, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Again, one of three primary passages in the Bible dealing with this event called the rapture, raptura, harpazo, the quick snatching, catching away of the church just prior to the seven-year tribulation, which is a time when God pours out his wrath for seven years because of this evil and junk that's going on, including the diluting and the hybridization of mankind being repeated like it was in the days of Noah. And the reason why the church is not going to be a part of that is because it's a time of God's wrath. Romans chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians 1, 1 Thessalonians Thessalonians 5 says, we are saved from, not appointed unto, and we are rescued from God's wrath. So we have to be out of here. That's what he's describing. We'll be caught up, taken up, off the planet, and then bang, comes the seven-year tribulation. It's called the rapture of the church. Now, of all things, stir everything you just saw together. These guys have supposedly come from millions and billions of miles away to give us information that we don't really need, okay, uh, which you think they would. Uh, but then, on top of all the other lies they've told, Satan's a great guy, build the Antichrist kingdom, Christianity's all wrong. <laughs> you know what they're also doing? At the same time, they've come all the way across the universe to explain away the rapture of the church. I'm not joking. I still have these resources in my office, which I do not recommend for pleasure reading, but I have them for proof positive when I was a new ager. And these are some of the channeled messages from the space aliens. And listen to what they're explaining away. Here's one example. Barbara Marciniak, she's a New Age author, 
Uh, I don't know if she's still alive today, but if she is, pray for her. Her book, Bringers of the Dawn, and that book is all about what she claims extraterrestrials from the star system Pleiades have told her. So she got into an altered state of consciousness, let them speak through her, and basically channeled this book. And so here's what the aliens said. They've come all the way across the universe uh, to, that you and I desperately need to know. Quote, there will be great shiftings within humanity on this planet. It will seem like great chaos and turmoil are forming, that nations are rising against each other in war, that earthquakes are happening more free. Oh, it's got to be true. The aliens, no, that's Matthew 24. They can read the Bible too. Hello, that's no big shakes. But they said this. Earth is shaking itself free. A certain realignment adjustment period is to be expected. Quote, the people who leave the planet during the time of earth changes do not fit here any longer. And they, Christian, are stopping the harmony of the earth. When the time comes that perhaps 20 million people leave the planet at one time, there will be a tremendous shift in consciousness for those who are remaining. Yeah, you betcha there will be. <laughs> Let me give you another new age. They're explaining away the rapture of the church. It wasn't God. It was the aliens that sucked them up. This lady, uh, Thelma Terrell... Uh, she wrote a book called, from the, these guys telling her, it's called Project World Evacuation. And here's what the aliens told her to tell us. All over the globe where warrants, uh, events warrant this, this will be the method of uh, evacuation. Mankind will be lifted, levitated, shall we say, by the beams from our smallest ship. See, it was the aliens that sucked them up. The great evacuation will come upon the world very suddenly. The flash of emergency events will be as lightning that flashes in the sky. Notice how they pepper it with biblical terminology to make it sound spiritual. Do not be concerned, she says. The aliens have told her to tell us that uh, if you do not participate in this first temporary lift up of souls who serve with us. So if you're left behind, don't be concerned. This merely means that your action in the plan is elsewhere and you will be taken for your instructions and will receive them in some other manner. No, I'm serious. Don't take personal affront if you are not alerted or not participate in this first phase of our plan. Your time will come later and these instructions are not necessary for you at this time. You liar. It makes me want to cry, too. I tell you what, these liars. On we practice that all week, man. This is amazing. One researcher says this. For almost 2,000 years, the Christian belief is that God will evacuate, rapture, the earth, of all born-again believers just prior to pouring out his wrath, because that's what the Bible teaches. But for many years now, many among the New Age movement have received messages from aliens and spirit guides that Mother Earth will cleanse herself. No, that's called the seven-year tribulation, but that's how they spin it. By ejecting all those with bad vibratory patterns, you know, us Christians, to another realm. That, that's where we went. We went to another realm, allowing the ascended masters and aliens to help us bring a golden age upon the earth. Really? So of all things to you, supposedly come millions and billions of light years away. You not only say Satan's a good guy, follow the, build the Antichrist kingdom, the Bible's got it all wrong, uh, there is no salvation, all that stuff, your little gods, all those lies, and then you just happen to explain away the disappearance of millions of people, that it was the aliens that got them. That's what a demon would do. And then now, all it's going to take is for, oh, I don't know, somebody like maybe the Pope to get up and make a global announcement to calm the fears of people. Because think about this. You're in the enemy's shoes, man. The rapture is going to happen. He knows it. He knows it. You can't spin this away. You can't ignore it in the media. right? You can't say, hey, look, there's a balloon. And squirrel, look over here. No, you're going to have to give an answer for this event where millions of people disappeared all across the planet, specifically only Christians. So you get your religious spokesperson to come on the news and say, hey, just want to let you guys know, don't worry about your loved ones. We've all lost someone special. But it's going to be okay. Our space brothers who've been orbiting the planet for quite some time now, they were not ready spiritually like the rest of us to go through the time of earth changes. And they're just being held temporarily. They'll come back later. But for those of us who are left behind, we are now in a time of peace and safety. Golden age upon humanity. Excuse me. And if you think that it's a stretch to think that the Pope would be involved in this, folks, you need to wake up. First of all, number one, anybody who's not a born-again Christian is going to be left behind. And you say, well, the, what about the Pope? Well, if the Pope believes what Catholicism teaches, which is a false gospel called a works-based false gospel salvation, that you've got to do good works and do certain things to get to heaven, which is not the gospel. It's only through the cross of Christ. Guess what? You and anybody that believes that is going to be left behind. And that's what they promote. But if you think that they're not going to be part of this alien deception and, and that he's going to be out there when the people disappear 
to religiously calm people of all faiths, they actually want to be the one making imminent disclosure. In fact, for years, they've been out there with telescopes looking for E.T. I'm not joking. Watch this. We could not talk life on other planets without the classic clip from E.T. right there. Interestingly, the Vatican. Just finishing up, this is the Vatican now, a five-day conference on aliens. Father Jonathan Morris, Fox News contributor, back with us. Father, good morning to you. What a great movie that was. <laughs> it was a wonderful movie. Drew Barrymore, and off she went. Uh, did the Vatican find alien life? You know what? It's sensationalistic as that question sounds. It's really not that far off from what we've seen in the news over these last days. The pictures of what might have been Pope Benedict standing on the, the roof of the Sistine Chapel looking for UFOs. That's, a, that's the type of images that this news conjures up. What is exceptional, what is exceptional is that the Vatican was taking very seriously what science might tell us about the possibility of extraterrestrial intelligent life forms. That's what the conference was about. By the way, do your research. The Vatican Catholic Church has no problem with the lie of evolution either. So it kind of fits hand in hand. But that's the tip of the iceberg. Watch this. They have an actual entity out there. Check it out yourself. It's called VORG, the Vatican Observatory Research Group. they got some of the most powerful telescopes on the planet, supposedly looking for ET. Okay, and you're saying, well, why are they in search for ET? And I quote, they believe the ETs are going to become our new saviors. I'm not joking. Watch this. Father Gabriel Funes, a Jesuit priest from the Vatican Observatory, stated, quote, extraterrestrial life may not have experienced a fall and may be free from original sin. Excuse me? Therefore, he says, they remain in full friendship with the Creator, which makes it possible for us to regard them as our brothers. Furthermore, since they're unfallen, they must be closer to God and must have a better understanding of the gospel, the Godhead, and the nature of God. In other words, they know God spiritual banners better than us and we need to listen to them and that's exactly what they say he went on to say that he would not only be willing to baptize an alien but listen the aliens are coming here to baptize us into their faith this is from the vatican folks quote it's going to require us to make some changes to our knowledge of an understanding of the gospel quote everything we think we know about the gospel is going to have to be thrown out what another vatican astronomer this guy he says quote he too would baptize an alien but only if asked and any entity, no matter how many tentacles it has, has a soul. And he says that these non-human forms, aliens, are what really what the Bible is talking about when the Bible talks about angels. And, quote, very soon the nations of the world are going to look to aliens for their what? Salvation. Why? Because we fell, they didn't. And the Bible says, don't you dare turn from the one and only gospel, no matter even if it comes from a so-called angel. Right? That's what Paul says here, Galatians 1, 8 through 9. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than what we preach to you, let him be eternally condemned. Paul says it a second time. If anyone, anybody's preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let him be eternally condemned. These guys need to be eternally condemned. That's what the Bible says. And as crazy as that is, even the Pope's in on it. He said he'd baptize an alien. Watch this on tape. Pope Francis reiterated his view Monday that everyone has the right to be baptized. But apparently, that invite extends even to Martians. The pontiff described the hypothetical situation during morning mass. According to Vatican Radio, Francis said, if, for example, tomorrow an expedition of Martians came, and some of them came to us, and one says, but I want to be baptized, what would happen? In other words, says The Wire, if God prompts some Martians to come to Earth, find the Pope, and say, we want in on this Catholicism thing, the Pope would probably say, okay, cool, but probably in Latin. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's Pope humor, right? But watch this. The Vatican also, the same people there, say that uh, Jesus is really a descendant of the aliens, that the virgin birth is actually a result of an alien abduction, that Jesus was a type of, quote, star child, listen, genetically engineered at his first coming, and he's coming again, it's kind of like a false second coming, with the aliens to help us again. It's like, what Bible are you reading? Well, they're not. They also, uh, Jesus warned about these, quote, uh, false teaching last days in the seven-year tribulation, the many Christ. And this is what he said, Matthew 24. Again, it's all about deceit, deceit, deceit. Jesus answered, watch out that no one what? Deceives you. What are they going to try to deceive you with? For many will come in my name claiming I am what? I am the Christ. We're the saviors, the new saviors now. And will deceive what? Unfortunately, many Many people fall for it. So how close are we to that? Watch this. Another professor at the Vatican says this. Very soon, there's information coming from another world. And once it is confirmed, it's going to require a rereading of the gospel as we know it. Excuse me. 
Another one said this, there's an alien presence on earth now, and I quote, they're preparing a major world statement about E.T., and its theological implications, and wants to be ready, who, the Vatican, wants to be ready with a statement about first contact. So it is not a stretch to say that after the rapture happens, that the Vatican's going to get up there, very possibly the Pope, and calm people's fears, but announce it like, hey, don't worry, the aliens got your loved ones, but for those that remain, it's a great time, our new saviors are here. This is what they're preparing for. This is what they want to do. This is their role in this that they even admit themselves. And so one guy says this. So what would happen then if someday the aliens, quote, showed up in one way or another, claimed that they seeded life on our planet, guided our evolution, and are now here to lead us into a golden age? Bing. Oh, and what if the Catholic Church gave the stamp of approval? It would dupe the whole planet just like that and explain away the rapture of the church. And the Vatican is poised to do that. And not only that, that's just the first lie. The first lie is to explain away the rapture of the church. The second lie, the same entities are preparing another lie for those who are left behind. Jesus said the seven-year tribulation is the worst time in the history of mankind. The aliens are saying, you, as you saw, who are left behind, you're a chosen one. Now you get to enter in the age of utopia. It's going to be great. And so, they're, then, so those that are left behind with this global event of people disappearing, then they'll allow aliens to appear on the scene in this global event. It'll create a global shock and awe. And that will become the excuse for humanity to band together now. And believe it or not, even Ronald Reagan admitted that's what would happen if aliens showed up. Watch this. This is crazy. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. My discussions with privately with General Secretary Gorbachev, when you stop to think that we're all God's children wherever we may live in the world, I couldn't help but say to him, just think how easy his task and mine might be in these meetings that we held if suddenly there was a threat to this world from some other species from another planet outside in the universe. We'd forget all the little local differences that we have between our countries and we would find out once and for all that we really are all human beings here on this earth together. And now we can bring peace to the planet. We can build a one world religion, one world government. We can elect a one world leader to lead humanity in this wonderful place. And hey, let's have the Pope take charge of all the religions and all been a setup. So you explain away the rapture of the church just like that. And then for those that are left behind, you use that as shock and awe event as an excuse to see we need to band together as humanity. The whole time, it was a custom-tailored, step-by-step lie to get people to go along with it. In fact, this lady admits just how long the lie has been in process. Watch this. In 1974 through 77, I met the late Dr. Werner von Braun in early 74. At that time, von Braun was dying of cancer, but he assured me that he would live a few more years in order to tell me about the game that was being played, that game being the effort to weaponize space, to control the earth from space and space itself. The strategy that Werner von Braun taught me was that first the Russians are going to be considered to be the enemy. In fact, when I met him in 74, they were the enemy, the identified enemy. We were told that they had killer satellites. We were told that they were coming to get us and control us, that they're in commies, that whole story. First, the Russians were the enemy against whom we're going to build space-based weapons. Then terrorists would be identified, and that was soon to follow. We heard a lot about terrorism. Then we were going to identify third world country crazies. We now call them nations of concern. But he said that would be the third enemy against whom we would be needing to build space-based weapons. And the next enemy was asteroids. Now, at this point, he kind of chuckled the first time he said it. Asteroids against asteroids were going to build space-based weapons. So it was funny then. And the funniest one of all was against what he called aliens, extraterrestrials. That would be the final card. And over and over and over, during the four years that I knew him, 
and was giving his speeches for him, he would bring up that last card. And remember, Cal, the last card is the alien card. We're going to have to build space-based weapons against aliens. And all of it, he said, is a lie. Wow. And so if we're getting close to that, what would we expect? If that lie is going to be used to explain away the rapture and to convince people who've been left behind because they rejected Jesus Christ their Savior today, what should you expect? In the news, they're going to slowly but surely start to admit that aliens and UFOs are real. After decades of full-on denial, the last card is being played. And for those left behind, it'll become the excuse to build what the Bible calls the Antichrist kingdom. And it's not going to be a good time. Jesus said, Matthew 24, For then there will be great distress unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. You don't want to be left behind. And unfortunately, just to make sure that people get the imprint now in their brains so that when they see people disappear across the planet, don't equate it with the Bible. Don't equate it with the rapture. Get that out of your head. Hollywood's been out there for years showing people, no, don't you remember that movie? It was the aliens that got them. Let me give you one example as we close. Stephen Hawking, astrophysicist and arguably one of the smartest people on the planet, warned us about the possibility of aliens from outer space. Hawking says that if extraterrestrials visit us, the outcome might be similar to when Columbus landed in America. In other words, it didn't turn out too well for Native Americans. Don't you remember that movie? It was the aliens that sucked them up. That's what happened to those people. Interesting that that would say, don't look up, because it's the exact opposite shocker of what Jesus said in Luke 21, 28. When these things begin to take place, stand up, lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The last day's lie, folks, is here. Let me give you real quick one other easy example. If you didn't see that movie, almost everybody on the planet saw this one, The Avengers. Some deity, some alien power, snapped their fingers, and people just flaked away, disappeared. It was the blip. No, that's what they want you to think. It was the rapture of the church. But Hollywood's out there giving as many different scenarios to explain it all away, folks. Because they're going to use that to explain away the rapture. And for those who are left behind in the worst time in the history of mankind, they're going to get you to think that, man, this is great when you just entered into man's worst nightmare. I'm kind of thinking that's what Satan and the demons would do. They hate us, folks. They hate humanity. Mankind is creating the image of God. And this is a spiritual war that we're in. The good news is you could avoid that whole deception if you would get saved today. His name is Jesus Christ, and he's real, and he's really coming back. But he's only coming back for people who have asked him to save him. It doesn't matter what you've done. He is willing to forgive you completely. That's why he died on the cross. The cross is simply the death penalty of the day. And so Jesus took our punishment and our place that we deserve, because we've all, myself included, sinned against God. We deserve to be separated from God. But Jesus said, if you would just believe on me what I did that I took your punishment in your place. I will not only forgive you, but listen, 
I will make you, as John was blown away, you're, uh, we become the children of God. We, we become what we sang about. We become his beloved. And he is not going to leave his beloved on this planet when he pours out his wrath. Amen. So you could go with us if you would just ask Jesus to save you and forgive you. Why would you hesitate? Because the rapture is imminent. It can happen at any moment. And the last thing you want to be is somebody sitting in a church service and you don't go nowhere. Like these people. We'll close in prayer after this. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light. And it was good. Are you ready? That event is going to happen. And there will be people who go to church services who were left behind. Not because you lost your salvation, because you can't. It's all safe and secure in Christ. It's because you never really turned to him. Maybe you fell for that other lie that's out there, unfortunately. Well, if I go to church services, you know, somehow I can earn merit with God or if I try to do good deeds, if I try to do at least, you know, balance the scales out, you know, if, as long as I get 51% and, you know, just try to be a good person. There's only one way out of this mess, and that's through the cross of Jesus Christ. That's it. You don't want to be here when the rapture takes place. You can go with us. But I think that's going to be the reality with a lot of people today. Because they mock and scoff at the Bible and Christianity and Jesus, like the aliens want them to do. And the problem with that is they are running the risk like that guy. One day, in the twinkling of an eye, you were sitting there one minute. Next thing you know, people disappeared, and you realize you've been left behind. And you drop on your knees, and you weep, and you gnash your teeth. Why? going to happen. I pray it doesn't happen to you, and I pray if it were to happen today, and it could, that this place would be empty. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for our study today and just how current your word is, and thank you for telling us, even in these last days, in minute detail, the deception of the evil one. And not just for us to be aware, but but more importantly, so that we could know ourselves, so we could share those who are not aware of the danger of being left behind. And God, if there's anybody here today, I don't know the heart, but you do, but I can be fooled, but you can't. You only can do, and you can only see what we can't see, and that's the heart. If there's anybody here today or watching online that's not truly born again, would you please save them even now? Draw them to you, Jesus. Have them cry out to you, Jesus, and ask for the forgiveness of their sins, and that they would entrust their eternal destiny to you, to your death, 
your work on the cross. You tell us if we confess you, Jesus, as Lord, if we believe in our heart that you, God, raised him from the grave, we will be saved. May that be true. May truly so, and I really mean this. Oh, God, please, if the rapture were to happen today, there would not be anybody sitting in these chairs. But if somebody's in danger of that, please save them now. We ask all this in your wonderful name, in Jesus' name, and all God's